Coming up on this special edition of Fulton Today, a look at what's on tap for the county in 2017. The first order of business for Fulton commissioners will be to tackle the budget and transition to the new city of South Fulton. I'm Priscilla Ortega and I'll have a full report next. And will this be the year that traffic relief finally comes to Fulton County? Details at how t could save you time in the new year. This special edition of Fulton Today starts right now. Welcome to this special edition of Fulton Today, everyone. As we usher in the new year, we take a look at what's on tap for Fulton County government in 2017 and what's on tap for its residents. And we'll begin where Fulton County Commissioners will begin, and that is the county's spending plan and, of course, the city of South Fulton transition. FGTV's Priscilla Ortega starts us off. The new city of South Fulton will certainly impact Fulton's finances in 2017. But before we look at the numbers, we'll first look at the transition of services and the transition of power. We're all advocating for you. There's no one against you. It is a transition that Fulton's top executives are trying to explain to employees. I did vote for the city of, um, of South Fulton. And a transition that residents hope will be smooth. The new city of South Fulton, now one of the largest cities in the county. Well, Fulton County is only going to be as strong as its cities. So now we're all going to be all cities except for this little piece on Fulton Industrial Boulevard for right now, but eventually all cities. And we're looking at to make us a strong county, we've got to have strong cities. There are four major service areas that will be transitioned to the new city. Police, fire, parks and recreation, and planning and zoning. It is expected that service agreements will be requested for the county to provide many services for an agreed upon period of time. I need the full address of where you are. Like 911, police, fire, parks, planning, transportation, and municipal court services. We know that uh, unincorporated Fulton, which is 90-something thousand people, needs to be vibrant economically. It needs to have great roads and bridges. It needs to have a great police force, parks, fire department, police department. And those things will not happen unless we work with them to make it a smooth transition. Fulton's 2017 budget allows four months of spending from the Special Services District Fund also known as the South Fulton Fund. That's because the new city will officially incorporate on May 1st, following the municipal elections. For candidates that are interested in running, uh, qualifying will be at the South Fulton Annex on Stonewall Tell Road from January 9th through January 13th. And in addition, the voter registration deadline for this election is February 20th. Fulton has its own transition team that will help ensure a transparent and smooth changeover. Now this team will also work with the governor's appointed transition committee. Reporting for FGTV, I'm Priscilla Ortega. Thank you very much, Priscilla. Now here are more details about the 2017 municipal election. Early voting will be available and begins February 27th at the Wolf Creek Library in the South Fulton Service Center on Stonewall Tell Road. And election day is March 21st for the seven council members and the mayor's race. And now on to that budget. The 2017 spending plan will be the first major order of business for the county commissioners. And as mentioned, it will be a little different. Among the most prominent changes, the voter approved incorporation of unincorporated South Fulton into that new city, as we mentioned, the transition of the health department services to the Fulton County Board of Health, the voter approved transportation special purpose local option sales tax, also known as t -SPLOS. The FY 2017 proposed budget totals $916 million, including $656 million for the general fund. The 2017 budget represents a transition of county government um, because the election happened at the very tail end of our budget development process. We had to make some final decisions, although we had been dual tracking budgets throughout the process, we had to make some final decisions and some final estimates. The board held its legally required public hearing on December 21st, but residents can again comment during the Board of Commissioners meeting next week in the Government Center Assembly Hall. 
By law, the financial plan must be adopted by the end of January. Four Fulton County Superior Court judges said farewell in 2016, which now means that four jurists will take the bench in 2017. FGTV's Dante Carter joins us now from the courthouse with this story. Hi, Shania. Two judges were sworn in before the holiday break and two more are expected to be sworn in in early January. Judge-elect Belinda Edwards took her oath of office and is ready to officially get to work immediately following the holiday. I will treat everyone that comes before me respectfully. I will hear the cases in a timely manner. I will rule on the cases in a timely manner. And I will make sure that when they leave the courtroom, they understand why they came to court and why I had to rule the way that I did. Meanwhile, one of her new colleagues, Judge Thomas Cox, was also sworn into the bench. What everybody should expect is justice and fairness. Those will be the driving uh, bywords for me and my staff. I will also try to serve the citizens with courteous professionalism. Both Judge Edwards and Judge Cox were elected by the Fulton County voters. And Fulton County Judge Eric Dunway was also elected to the bench and he is expected to be sworn in in January. Now Governor Deal will appoint the jurors to replace Judge Jerry Baxter who announced his departure from the bench just before that 2016 election cycle began. Judge Baxter, Judge Bedford, Judge Lane and Judge Shube all retired at the end of the year. Another new face in 2017 will be the new Solicitor General Keith Gamage. He will be sworn in in the next few weeks and he replaces longtime Solicitor General Carmen Smith who retires after 20 years of service. For now, in front of the Fulton County Courthouse, I'm Dante Carter for FGTV. All right, thank you very much, sir. Meanwhile, Fulton County residents are finally looking for some traffic relief in 2017. Thanks to the voter support of the Fulton County Transportation Special Purpose Local Option Sales Tax, known again as TSPLOST, approximately $570 million for transportation investments will be made between 2017 and 2022. Fulton County, like other jurisdictions, chose its own project list with the citizen input for the transportation planning and the board approved that list. I feel very confident. I'm very happy with all the support that we received from the Board of Commissioners. And I think that was done due to working with them closely. The TSPLOS referendum was brought to voters through the collaborative effort of Fulton County and the 13 Fulton cities outside of Atlanta. To see the full project list, go to FultonCountyGA.gov forward slash TSPLOS. Well, one of the county's most popular programs is coming back in 2017. We are talking about Fulton Citizens University. The 12 week interactive class teaches residents how their tax dollars are spent. Each week they spend time with a different county department. From balancing the budget to learning all about fire, police and even FGTV, the sessions help the residents to become ambassadors for the county. We're very excited about telling the story of our departments and the hard work they do on behalf of citizens and um, letting folks see behind the scenes how we make decisions and put their tax dollars to good work. The Thursday evening classes begin in April, but registration begins next week. Here is the email and the phone number to get more information. And still to come on this special edition of Fulton Today, County Commissioners forecast the new year. Stay with us. Fulton Commissioners address the challenges and the opportunities in 2017. Here they are now in their own words in this week's District by District coverage. 2017 is going to be another banner year for Fulton County. You're going to see seven commissioners working collaboratively and in a coordinated fashion in terms of providing the necessary governance of the county, providing policy, also overseeing the budgetary process, and we will reaffirm our commitment to our core values and principles in terms of serving uh, people in our community from the youngest to the oldest, supporting the arts, supporting senior services, supporting Grady Hospital. Also providing top quality services in the library area as well as in the administration of criminal justice. And so this is gonna be another banner year. We are vibrant, 
economically, we're vibrant socially, we're, we're vibrant in all ways and all aspects, and so I'm very excited about 2017. It will certainly be another banner year for Fulton County. Well, my area is in the area of uh, all people have economic opportunities, and so as we enter our first full year with Select Fulton, we will be working to create a positive business environment throughout our county, working with our cities um, to support their economic development efforts. One of the main areas of focus, of course, is to try and identify the labor needs throughout the county so that we can ensure that companies that locate to Fulton County or that um, are here already can uh, attract the workforce that they need to continue to thrive in Fulton County. So that would be a big focus for 2017, but we feel like we have a very, very positive um, business climate already that we're going to hopefully enhance in the future. 2017 promises to certainly be another exciting year in Fulton County. Got several things going on. Uh, certainly the transition of services to a new city, city of South Fulton. Uh, we look forward to certainly working with the residents to help make that a reality, and that's going to certainly be a, a, a year-long thing and maybe out for a few more years, but certainly excited to be part of that and working with, those, work, working with all the residents to make that a reality. Uh, we're going to be working on delivering a new behavioral health model that over time should result in delivering be, us being able to deliver services in that much-needed critical area to a multiple of citizens that we're not servicing right now, so I'm very interested and, and um, excited about uh, the effort that we're engaged, that engaged in there and look forward to being a part of that. And then in my district, I'm excited about the fact that uh, we're going to be starting the process of expanding our, our water treatment facilities. You know, water is, a, is, is the lifeblood uh, for economic vitality and uh, certainly and, and certainly critical to all of us. And that's an exciting thing that we're going to be engaged in, in the expansion of our Big Creek and Little River facilities. So those are just a few things that I'm excited about as we head into 20, 2017. It's going to be a lot on the plate, but those are just a few things that I'm excited about. Hi, I'm District 3 Commissioner Lee Morris. Your county commission will, in the new year, continue to work to improve the criminal justice system, finish the library bond renovations, manage the transition of the health department, and fund the long-deferred maintenance of county facilities. Those and other initiatives will keep us busy in 2017. May the year be a great one for your county government, but more importantly, may it be a great year for you and your family. God bless you and yours. As we look to 2017, I am very excited about the um, cityhood of South, South Fulton and we will be working with the citizens of that community to make sure that they have a smooth transition into the new city of South Fulton. I'm also looking forward to working with our health department to make a smooth transition of our health department uh, as it begins to work uh, in conjunction with the state of Georgia health department and we will also be looking at a more comprehensive approach to providing behavioral health uh, needs to our community. So there's a lot to look forward to uh, in 2017, as well as the whole transportation initiative with our TSPLAS. So there are good things coming in 2017. In 2017, we look forward to a wonderful year. We look forward to making sure that Fulton County residents remain safe. We look forward to making sure that Fulton County residents are healthy and we are well on the way to accomplishing those goals in District 5. We host our annual Family Fun Day event, our annual Black History Film Festival, and we're excited also about our partnerships with ACCG and NACO, the Association of County Commissioners of Georgia and the National Association of Counties. We want to make sure to not only bring the resources and benefits to District 5, but to all of Fulton County. The woods are lovely, dark, and deep, but we have promises to keep and miles to go before we sleep. Miles to go before we sleep. Happy New Year to you and your family. We look forward to another year of together getting it done. Stay strong.
Now you can catch more of your commissioners at work all this week with the rebroadcast of the Board of Commissioners meeting right here on FGTV. And still to come on Fulton today, could a big announcement be coming from the health department this year? We'll tell you all about it next. Welcome back, everybody. It's a big time of transition for the Fulton County Health Department and a big announcement concerning the main health center. FGTV's Lynn Vaughn explains. A big year ahead for public health with many changes already underway. One change involves leaving the downtown Aldrich Health Center for a new location at 10 Park Place a few blocks away. We are in the process of of renovating the interior of the building and creating a brand new clinic. County leaders say moving from the 1950s era Aldrich building means patients will have a newer space and updated technology. Behavioral health will also become a separate department from public health, although the two will continue to work collaboratively. And the public health department will be an independent entity under a new Fulton Board of Health all under the auspices of the Georgia Department of Public Health. So it will be a seven-member Board of Health, which will be involved in the day-to-day, -day with me as health director, in the decision-making for overall setting goals and policies for the health department. Fulton Health Director Dr. Kathleen Toomey says the change will make Fulton County consistent with the other health districts in the state and will be beneficial. We will have an opportunity, I think, to leverage some of those additional state resources as well as be more competitive as we apply for additional funding. Locations for HIV services like PrEP, which provides at-risk clients with daily medications to prevent HIV, will be expanded. And the county will work toward having better communication with the jail to follow up with HIV, tuberculosis, and STD cases among inmates. Dr. Toomey says these changes will help reflect the new and improve Fulton County Public Health Department. Reporting for FGTV, I'm Lynn Vaughn. Thank you very much, Lynn. Meanwhile, this year, the Aging and Youth Department will be expanding its partnerships to better serve seniors and young people. A program aimed at reducing in-school suspension rates will grow as the department continues to collaborate with Fulton County and Atlanta Public Schools. One of our uh, initiatives that we uh, supported was the Peacemaker Initiative that is um, a model out of Harlem, New York and two schools in Fulton County will be implementing that to teach students how to uh, address their emotional challenges that become barriers to learning and interacting in their classrooms. Youth conferences that encourage staying in school and avoiding drug use like Don't Touch the Fire will also continue. The My Brothers Keeper program, which is designed to help young people reach their full potential, will expand employment opportunities and mentoring programs. As for the aging side, the five-year plan for improving all county senior centers will get underway. And there will be a new transportation provider that will offer added features. Uh, seniors will be getting reminder calls uh, when, they're, when they've had a, when they booked a, a trip to go to the doctor or to the senior center. Uh, they'll get a reminder call the day before. Uh, and then when the bus is en route, they'll get a call when the bus is 15 minutes away so they can start getting ready, get their coat on. Uh, and be ready for the bus to show up. Popular health related events like the Golden Games during Older Americans Month will continue. You can call the Star Line to stay involved and informed. You can expect more programs and classes from the Cooperative Extension Division now that the agency is fully staffed. The Director of Cooperative Extension says the five newly hired agents will help expand youth development and gardening programs throughout the county. Popular classes will return in the new year and new ones will also be added. We will have community gardening classes. We will also have diabetes education classes and um, new classes regarding chronic disease management. This year, Cooperative Extension will expand 4-H classes at a new office inside the Atlanta History Center in Buckhead. 
Extension agents want more people to get involved with the 4-H programs in 2017. 4-H teaches leadership and life skills to youth ages 9 to 19. And still to come, it's another phase of improvements for the county library. We'll explain when we come back. Well, one story to watch in 2017 will be the new phase of library renovations. The second phase of the voter approved library building project will include renovations to over 20 libraries. The library director says the first half of the year will mostly be planning out what those renovations will include. So we'll be hiring contractors, working with designers, meeting with the public, trying to come up with a plan for how we want to position this system overall when we emerge around 2019, 2020 with all new renovated libraries. Public meetings will be held for residents who would like to give their input. Also on the 2017 library agenda is the addition of more ebooks. We've seen a big trend in ebook usage, and so we want to try and capitalize on that by offering more alternatives in electronic format. Library officials also hope to bring more young people to the Auburn Avenue Research Library to learn about the historical collections and other resources available at that amazing branch. And of course, kids programmings like the Summer Reading Initiative will return this year. Well, for the county's arts and culture department, more plays and more partnerships. Two Kenny Leon True Colors Theater Company productions have already been announced for 2017. Exit Strategy and Between Riverside and Crazy will hit the stage at the Southwest Art Center. And starting this year, the county will shift the day-to-day -day operations of Wolf Creek Amphitheater to the company Live Nation. We're looking at creating a new identity for Wolf Creek, uh, which, is a very, which is a gem of an entertainment center in South Fulton. Uh, so we're, we're looking to do that in 2017 as well. Funding through the department's contract for services program will be open to individual artists as well, and not just arts organizations. And a new initiative called Cultural Threads will be taken off. It will allow a number of uh, folks that are involved with the interfaith uh, community and interfaith council um, to talk about cultural understanding and cultural competency uh, in a presentation. Right now it's in its conceptual uh, stage. Details are still in the works, but a multi-department program called Project Impact, which targets at-risk youth, will also debut. To get more information about arts programming for 2017, you can just check out their website. And finally, 2017 will also be another amazing year for the county's Parks and Recreations Department. The director, Tony Phillips, says several tennis courts are expected to be renovated and other improvements to park facilities are also on tap. Details will be forthcoming on the projects. Services for Fulton County Parks will eventually be transitioned to the new city of South Fulton. We're excited about what the future holds. We'll look forward to the new city of South Fulton transition and in adding all the experience and knowledge that our staff in Parks and Recreation bring to the table to help that process run as smoothly as possible. The Park Patrol program, which improves resident safety, will be expanded in the new year and new public-private partnerships will be formed. There are other options that we're looking at in terms of partnering with different organizations to add programming options and new and exciting programs, as well as continuing the ones that have been successful in 2016. Those successful programs include the basketball and swimming teams, as well as after-school programs that incorporate study time, exercise, and arts and crafts. Gotta love Parks and Rec. Well, as we wrap up this special edition of Fulton today, we want to remind you that we want to connect with you again this year. Check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, our YouTube channel. Well, that does it for this special edition of Fulton today. Thank you so much for watching all year long. Join us each week for news around and about Fulton County. Happy New Year, everybody.